In this video, we're going to look at protecting group strategies for memes. And before we get into the details, I thought it would be useful to kind of take a step back and review the structure of the amino functional group and its reactivity and how that can create problems in synthesis. So amines contain free carbon groups or hydrogens linked to nitrogen. And in a neutral amine, this nitrogen bears a lone pair. And it's really the reactivity of this nitrogen lone pair or amino lone pair that presents problems at times in the course of a synthesis. And, and the problem, of course, is that nitrogen has relatively low electronegativity, and that means that the lone pair is relatively basic. And here we mean basic in, in two senses, right? Either the Lewis basic sense, where that lone pair coordinates to a Lewis acid, or the Bronsted basic sense, where the amino group or amino functionality acts as a Bronsted base and deprotonates an acid to form an ammonium functional group. And so the problem here is that in practice, if we use acidic conditions, conditions you know, containing some amount of a strong or even in some cases a weak acid, we can end up with reactivity of the amino group that we don't want to see. For example, if we want that acid to touch another functional group within a complex organic molecule, we need to somehow turn off the basicity of that lone pair. The essential ingredient of all the protecting group strategies to do this is really an electron withdrawing group linked to the nitrogen. And the general idea is that we're going to tame the basicity of that lone pair through electron delocalization, basically engaging that lone pair in resonance delocalization so that it's stabilized. And so the core of the strategy in the protecting phase is to link an electron withdrawing group to the nitrogen. And actually to facilitate showing this, I'm going to replace one of the R groups with a hydrogen since typically the way this is done is by substituting for this hydrogen a group that is electron withdrawing. And so at the protection stage, we would end up in general with a structure that looks like this. An electron withdrawing group is linked to nitrogen, and this decreases the basicity to negligible levels, really, of the amino lone pair. Just to make this a little more clear, we can return to our general definition of an electron withdrawing group as a group containing a multiple bond. It could be a double or triple bond. Actually, in the context of nitrogen protection, it's almost always a double bond, XY double bond, where Y is more electronegative than X, and this creates an electron withdrawing effect and additional resonance forms. In particular, we could imagine electron flow like this, showing delocalization of nitrogen's lone pair across especially the atom Y uh, in this three atom pi system. That delocalization, that stabilization of the lone pair, allows us to treat this compound with acid in such a way that the amino group remains completely untouched. Once we've done the chemistry we need to do inside the R group or, or groups, we can return the amino group to its original form through deprotection, and this essentially involves just substituting the electron withdrawing group for the original hydrogen. And this can be done using acidic conditions or reducing conditions that ultimately reduce the electron withdrawing group and cause the liberation of free amine. And so our final product after this sequence would be R prime 2 and H with the H restored and where we've done some kind of chemical change inside these R groups. So now let's look at two specific examples of protecting groups for amines that are in common use. The first class we're gonna look at are the sulfonamides. The sulfonyl group consists of sulfur linked to two oxygens, and these can be drawn as double bonds or as dipolar single bonds with O minus and S plus in a resonance form, and some kind of R group linked to the sulfur. And this R group is sometimes electron withdrawing to enhance the electron withdrawing strength of this group. So that's definitely an electron withdrawing group. Notice that it, it fits our pattern of an atom more electronegative here, less electronegative here, and a linkage through a multiple bond. When we connect this group to a nitrogen, to an amino nitrogen, we end up with what's called a sulfonamid. It looks like an amide with a sulfur at the center, or SO, instead of the carbonyl carbon, right? And we'll notice the resonance that we looked at on the last slide happening inside this group with delocalization of the amino lone pair onto the sulfonyl group oxygen. And that's really the key to the protection of the amino nitrogen under acidic conditions. This nitrogen is no longer basic at all. To protect, we treat the amine with a reagent called a sulfonyl chloride. And you may have seen these before in the context of the creation of sulfonates. Reagents like TSCl, MSCl and NSCl are all examples of sulfonyl chloride, where the TS group is toluene sulfonate, MS group is methane sulfonyl chloride, and the NS group is a substituted benzene sulfonyl chloride. 
And so the variation in these is just in the identity of this R group here. In practice, TS is very commonly used with the means to create toluene sulfonamides. Now, if we dig into the reaction itself, we can notice a few interesting things about this protection reaction, actually. The first is that the nitrogen acts as a nucleophile and the sulfur as an electrophile, and the sulfur is linked to a good leaving group in the chloride. And so one way to think about this, if we focus on the O double bond SCL group here, and notice that what happens in the product is displacement of chloride, right? There's no longer a chlorine atom connected to that sulfur by the nucleophilic amino nitrogen. We can see that from the sulfur's perspective, this looks like nucleophilic acyl substitution. And I'll put acyl in quotes because of course we're not substituting at an acyl group, not a C double bond O group, but an S double bond O group. But it's highly analogous to nucleophilic acyl substitution. It's a nucleophilic substitution happening at sulfur. The pyridine in this reaction is important and its purpose is to act as a base. While we won't go in detail into the full mechanism, one thing you may notice is that Cl- is kicked off and that an H is missing from the amino group and that H is really in the form of H+. If we were to balance this reaction completely and try to find the pyridine in the products, we would see that one of the byproducts is pyridinium chloride, the conjugate acid of pyridine and the chloride anion. And so the purpose of the pyridine really is to mop up that HCl in a sense and provide us with a stable ionic salt in which the HCl can be sequestered. This gets washed out in aqueous workup, leaving us with the sulfonamide in the organic layer. It takes a lot to deprotect a sulfonamide. They're much more stable than, for example, amides and carbamates, which we'll look at on the next slide in which we have a carbonyl group with either a carbon group or an alkoxy group connected to the carbonyl as well. And so it takes a good bit of heat and concentrated aqueous acid to disconnect the sulfonyl group from the amino nitrogen. One thing we should notice here is that overall what's happened is the elements of water have been incorporated into the products. But actually, again, if you think of the nitrogen as a leaving group in and of itself in this reaction doing something along these lines in terms of electron flow, this is again a kind of nucleophilic acyl substitution happening at sulfur, where the nucleophile now is, is water. And as you might imagine, using solvent quantities of water here is important to drive this reaction to products. If acidic deprotection conditions are a problem for other functionality in the molecule, there's an alternative approach for liberating the free amine or, or deprotecting that involves using reducing conditions. The idea behind reducing conditions is that the sulfonyl group with sulfur linked to two oxygens is highly oxidized and we can reduce this to ultimately liberate amine. And how this is typically done is using lithium metal, that's not Li+, that's actually lithium zero in liquid ammonia. So the sulfonyl group is quite popular for protection of amines. And the last thing that I'll point out to you is that you'll all often see that sulfonyl group abbreviated in reaction schemes using these abbreviations, TS, MS, and NS. When you see these connected to nitrogen, you're looking at a sulfonamide functional group.